eating well. I'm trying. Yeah, you're not eating well. That's a fact. That's 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 a crazy statement that you just said right there. If you're telling me you're big and you big be- you've been big bellied for your whole life and you, you you're still obese, you, you, the by definition you can't be eating well. What do you mean by eating well? By what metric are you eating well? You might be eating well compared to like. I don't know, dude, from like starving people in India or something like that, malnourished people that are like four foot two because they didn't have any food. Maybe you might be eating well on that front, but you might be eating a little bit too well. The body hierarchy. A socially constructed system which values smallness and which rewards and punishes thin and fat bodies accordingly. In other words, the body hierarchy values some bodies over others and is built on white supremacy, misogyny, and ableism. Damn. This is why it's so important to investigate the ways that our brains still function within the hierarchy. Why is it always a hierarchy? Why is it always somebody else? It's always some phantom organization or white people or I guess men, white men. I don't know why you guys think we're so special. Most of us can't even wear deodorant properly. I know some guys that have made sticks of deodorant last three plus years. And you think that dudes are responsible for holding back fat people? I think real deal, most of these people need to get a reality check, dude. You real deal think that it's white dudes like in a big tower somewhere at the top of like going like this, going like this and going, hmm, how are we going to keep down fat people today, Joseph? Hmm, Joseph, what do you think? I think today we're going to force KFC this time. KFC, give them the deals. Have them do this. What do you like? Whoa, how, how deep do you think this really runs? And why is it always never you? I get it. It's like always easier to throw away your own responsibility and cede that to somebody else. But at some point, you have to at least start taking some accountability for yourself. It's too easy. It's way too easy, dude. And I'm sick of these terrible backgrounds. Like, why is it so sparkly back there? It's not cool to have this, 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 I don't even know what that is, like unicorn semen. This is why it's so important to investigate the ways that our brains still function within the hierarchy. When I have a feeling of wishing for smallness, perhaps because I was at the doctor and they- If you went to the doctor and your doctor was like, you need to lose weight. This is an issue. Your weight is a problem. And then you go, I need to change the way I think. He made me feel bad about my thinness. I want to not think about thinness. And you just go, la, 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 la. What do we, why would you ever consider that to be a bad thing? Your doctor is obviously the type of person, like doctors in general are supposed to be the people that are gonna like, uh, I don't know, try to help you through medical issues. Why would you, Whatever, dude. Okay, let's hear what she has to say. I have a feeling of wishing for smallness, perhaps because I was at the doctor and they refused to treat me until I solved my fatness. Most of the (laughs) time, if you're fat and you're going in for like joint pains or other things, yeah, uh, a lot of those issues can be attributed to you being fat. And I don't think it's like a far-fetched idea that a doctor would recommend weight loss, especially since weight loss, losing weight, especially when you're a very big person could alleviate almost all of your problems or at least mitigate them to a very noticeable degree. But I mean, I guess you could just go, my doctor told me that I was fat and I felt bad about that. And and, and I I thought that thinness was a good idea. So, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to like, oh, I'm going to like really condition myself to believe that fatness is beautiful and great. Perhaps because I was at the doctor and they refused to treat me until I solved my fatness. Or because of the simple inaccessibility of not being able to fit into public infrastructure like planes or restaurant seating. I have to first acknowledge the feeling as a natural response to the stress of discrimination and inaccessibility. I need to reframe- Nobody, nobody thinks like this. Like you're not, you're not going out to eat. And you sit down in a chair and then you're upset because the chair has armrests and you go, this is a form of discrimination. I'm just being discriminated against right now. You know, systemic issues do, do they do happen. And because of that, that's the reason why I'm oppressed right now. My doctor told me that my diabetes is because I'm fat and I could literally alleviate those right now if I just chose to lose weight. I could probably get rid of my high blood pressure. All these issues, you know, my joint pains, all stuff it could be alleviated. My doctor told me this, but I'm not going to. Because this is oppression. This is discrimination. This doctor is telling me right now it's all discrimination. Is it really discrimination? Is it really systemic problems? Like, can you imagine being a black guy, like, pre-1960s and going, hey, can I own this house? And they go, nah, nah, you're black. We don't like that. Ew, you're gross. Black? Ugh. And then you see this person in 2024 going, I can't fit... (laughs) I can't fit in chairs at restaurants, oppression, systemic, systemic oppression. Okay. Or a doctor actually trying to treat you. And then you go systemic, systemic oppression. That's all it is. Systemic oppression. 
the feeling as a natural response to the stress of discrimination and inaccessibility. I need to reframe my thoughts away. You need to reframe your whole body. Forget about reframing your thoughts. You, you, you're too big to fit in regular chairs. You should lose weight. I, there's nothing else I can say besides that. You're too big for society at large. It's too, is that, is that, why is that so hard to believe for you people, man? Natural response to the stress of discrimination and inaccessibility. I need to reframe my thoughts away from moving higher within an unjust system and towards fighting for access, dignity, and respect for all bodies. You're just never going to get that. And I, guys, shut the fuck up, dude. What is this like hair, this hair thing that she did right here to like prove a point? You're telling me you're having all these problems, all these issues while being fat, okay? Like systemic issues, of not fitting in chairs, which I would struggle to find that to be a systemic issue. But sure, if most chairs don't fit you, I would obviously consider that to be a systemic problem. But I think that sometimes when these people say systemic problems, it's such a terrible way of trying to basically say that you're so fat. Like if you're doing it to yourself, right? It, if you make a car and that car takes up two lanes of traffic and then you're upset, that you keep getting pulled over and your car keeps getting impounded because your car is not safe for the road and then you go this is a systemic issue is it the car is it is it the road's fault is it the car is it the police officers is it all these people or is it you making a car that's way too big and inefficient to drive on roads could it be that no it could not obviously be the car so when i hear these people talking about I can't fit in chairs, I have to buy two seats on a plane, and my doctor tells me that I'm fat, and then therefore, that's that's all systemic issues. I just always think, what the fuck is wrong with you? How can you, how do you live in society like that? How, how can you like, look at all your problems and then deem them not to be your issues and then instead go we need systemic change we need to advocate for ourselves respect whatever the fuck like what are you talking about what are you you sound like a ridiculous person and nobody when you say these words people do not understand them because the baseline understanding of what your words are used for so like systemic issues oppression nobody's thinking about a fat person that can't fit in a chair when you think of systemic racism right or systemic oppression in general what are you thinking about you're thinking about somebody that's getting pulled over because they're black or you're thinking about somebody that couldn't buy a house because they were just not able to or you're thinking that you're thinking about a whole bunch of things oppression too you're not thinking about a fat person struggling to fit sit down in a chair because they're, they're just literally physically incapable of doing that like that's not like it's just to make those correlations it is so incredibly disrespectful compared to like all the people that actually do suffer from discriminations. Ah, ah, but you know what? We live in a, a beautiful era nowadays where everybody wants to be oppressed and it's just like there's a lot of value on it. So yeah, I mean, sheesh, bro, go ahead, be oppressed. I mean, it's not real oppression. You're just kind of making it up. You're fighting your own battle at this point. Like you're making your own fight and then you're fighting yourself, which... All right, whatever, an unjust dude. system and towards fighting for access. It's got to be uncomfortable to have these pom-poms in your ears, right? I just feel like it'd be itchy all over the shoulder blades and things like that. Whatever, dude. Reframe my thoughts away from moving higher within an unjust... I, I just can't believe that somebody has to even say that. Like, I have to reframe my thoughts. I know that what I'm... What I'm basically hearing is like, I know that what I'm hearing is truthful, but instead of believing it to be truthful, I'm instead going to try to reorient the way that I'm thinking to make it not so bad. What the fuck are you talking about? You're trying to change the line of code in your brain to make it seem like it's not as bad as it actually is when it doesn't change the actual idea of what's happening to you, the physical implications of what's going system on. System and towards fighting for access, dignity, and respect for all bodies. This message is for fat people and fat people only. So if that's Here we are, right here. Check me out. Fat bodies only. You already know. Let's hear not it. Not you. Keep scrolling. No. Hey. Hey. I get the sense that you maybe need to take a couple of deep breaths this oh, yeah. morning oh, or yeah. night or afternoon, wherever it is you are. I do too. <laughs> so let's take a couple of deep breaths. Ready? <laughs> That's not how that works. First, you can't like pre-order the deep breaths that you're going to have to have when you walk up those stairs. I've never heard some shit like that before in my life. Like, oh, guys, I know, I know later today you're going to walk up probably a flight of stairs. You're going to be winded at the end of that. Let's take those breaths that you're going to take later on. Let's take them right now. So that's just to preemptively prepare you for that, you know, so you'll get them through. So you'll get it. No, that's not how that works. That's the, you, that's, you can't pre-order the breaths that you're going to need for later. Yo, damn, melting my screen, dude. Can you fucking... Aim for your belly button the next time. Go deeper. Yeah, oh, what? What? Dude, what'd you just say to me? Aim for your belly button. Aim for my belly button? I thought we were breathing. 
What are we doing right now? Are you trying to su seduce me? What do you mean aim for my belly button? What are we talking about right now? I thought we were breathing. Button the next time, go deeper. Yo, gosh. Whew. Damn, dude. One more. No, no more. <laughs> what is this even doing for you? Can you imagine seeing somebody in the car like this? Like, just going like this? <sighs> and then you see somebody, like, looking at you like, what the fuck? There's fucking red. There's a green light. What are you doing? Like, come on. Get get moving, dude. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye. That didn't help me at all. That made me feel uncomfortable. My screen is melting. Hey. Good morning, Miss, uh, Marie. What can I do for you? Yeah, Milk Marie, she got a thing for me. I got a thing for her. I feel like something's wrong. I've been getting- Yeah, the obesity, dude. The problem with your weight, that's an issue. Anyway. Dizzy spells lately that are out of control. These migraines are killing me. I've been taking the medication you gave me, and it's just, nothing is working. Have you tried losing some weight? True. What does a migraine and dizziness have to do with my weight? A lot of times when people will say these things, like it could be due to the fact that your nutrition is so incredibly terrible and your hormones are out of whack because like, as you know, right? Who is that one girl that literally got cancer for, from being too fat? Like she, her body produced way more estrogen because her body was so incredibly fat, which is a byproduct of being fat, which is one of the reasons why men don't like beat off as much and why women don't have the high sex drives that they used to be able to have. It's because your hormones are fucked. They're just compet day in day out your hormones are just being just mouth slammed because you have an inability to not get your shit in check wouldn't it be better to feel better like i understand you probably don't really realize that over the time frame of years and maybe even a decade plus and some people that this is just how you are that's not how you are you've just been living like garbage because you just i don't know too lazy to lose the weight and when i hear people go i'm having migraines i'm having all these issues what would that have to do with my weight? Your hormones are perpetually being body washed every single fucking day. It's like waking up with like four hours of sleep. Then you should have gotten eight. That's like what it's like for you every single day. So, and I know that you guys are constantly having these problems. I've talked to so many fat people and I've seen these studies. Fat people constantly feel tired. They constantly feel like aches and pains where they shouldn't. Like they feel like they're 30. They feel like they're 40, 50 years old when they're 20 years old, which is not good by the way. Your, your body shouldn't be like aging in this particular format like okay it's just not good okay and i want to hear these people complain about this shit and they go what does my weight have to do with this i can't believe my doctor would recommend weight loss out of all things all i went in for was migraines she might have a point that doctor might have a point dude and i'm not saying all the time but dude this might be the right this might be the right answer I'm losing some weight what does a migraine and dizziness have to do with my weight you know, maybe drinking some more water. True, drink more water. Get rid of that Coca-Cola out of your mouth. Real deal ingestion of the liquid sustenance known as H2O in your mouth. Drink it down. Have that just fulfill all the areas of your body. Just, oh, 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 liquefy yourself. Really just cream pie your whole body with the liquid sustenance of H2O. Uh, um, counting calories. True. Have you tried that? Yeah. I come here so that I can figure out what is wrong with me. Yeah, and the doctor is telling you what's wrong. You're fat. That's an issue. It's not a good thing to be fat. You should have that shit be adjusted. I feel like your doctor, even though it's you, is helping you out here. I think that your doctor's doing a good job, even though it's you. Is, have you tried that? I come here so that I can figure out what is wrong with me. Not for you to tell me that I need to- You're not coming here. Like if, okay, I get it. If you were walking in and your arm was hanging off and it was like bleeding, you know, and you were like, I don't know, like what are we gonna do about this, right? My arm is gone. It's kind of like, it's there, but it's also hanging on. Your doctor goes, um, I gotta keep it a solid buck with you. You big, damn, you are big. You know what? I think actually this might be a blessing in disguise. This arm hanging off is gonna fall off. There's nothing about that, okay? But when it falls off, you're gonna lose like 50, 60 pounds. Like you're gonna look at the number of the scale, it's gonna go way down. I mean, granted, it's not the right kind of weight loss, but it's losing weight. So good for you right now most doctors are not doing that like they're gonna adjust the things here in america especially dude they'll write you down for procedures you don't even fucking need they'll just have you going to do shit and you just sit there and go i don't even know what this is for but i'll do it because i don't know what this is right here in america because they want to run up your bill 
right? So when I hear people going into doctor's offices and they go, my doctor didn't tell me any of the problems. I think most of the time that's bullshit. I'm not saying that in her case is bullshit, but I mean, it obviously is. It's not even a real scenario. It's a fake scenario. She just made this up. That's not actually her doctor. That's her. If you didn't know. If you are going to the doctor and your doctor is prescribing weight loss as something that could alleviate a lot of your problems and you take that as them being fat phobic, you have a mental deficiency. There's just no other way to say it than that. Your doctor is telling you the truth. I don't know what else to say than that. Your doctor, his entire job is to tell you what is going wrong with your body and how to alleviate those problems and you're taking that as fat phobia. You have a mental disability okay there's no is you, you you have a mental deficit that's the only that's the only deficit that you have i come here so that i can figure out what is wrong with me not for you to tell me that i need to lose weight that's why i'm getting dizzy and getting these migraines it's because i need to lose weight true you know maybe we should consider putting you on like weight loss medication maybe that would definitely help the migraines and the dizziness. I think a lot of doctors can't really just prescribe you medicine just out of nowhere, by the way. Like I know when I went to the doctor, right? My, 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 my doctor was like, you might have ADD. And I was like, oh, okay. Why do you think that? He's like, oh, it's just these symptoms and things like that. And I was like, okay, so how do I know? He's like, listen, you got to go to this clinic because I can't just prescribe you medication. It's an amphetamine or some shit like that. I don't fucking know. Who's going to prescribe me a whole bunch of drugs? But I'm not the type of person that just like wants to be on drugs, obviously. And uh, he was like, we got to go to this place and you got to get this procedure done and this and that. And I called up this place, right? And I was like, oh, I got to get like a mental evaluation or whatever. And they were like, Okay, we got you. So we're going to literally mail you, not mail you, we're going to send you a PDF that you're going to fill out, but you can't send it back to us um, via email. You're going to have to mail it back to us or you have to drive the 45 minutes. That's like, that's actually where it is and deliver it to us hand delivered. And keep in mind, the fucking, the stack of paper they told me to print out was massive. It was ginormous. It was like probably easily 25 pages of fucking just massive shit like, oh, are you white? Are you feeling depressed? What's something happened to you when you were a kid? I was just like looking at this shit like, I don't have ADD, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? Right? And I'm not filling that shit out. That's just ridiculous, dude. And I would have, I would have filled it out if they let me e-fill it out and send it back via email. Bro, what the fuck is that? Who is mailing anything in 2024? Mail shouldn't even exist anymore. Even the mailman doesn't want to mail anything. I was talking to the dude the other day and he was like, I was like, oh, bro, do we have any mail? And he was like, yeah, bro, I hate you. I hate doing this. And I was like, you hate mail? Because like he was like, yeah, bro, it just blows up my back. It's, I'm black. I don't know. The black part wasn't actually about him being a mailman. But anyway. Maybe that would definitely help the migraines and the dizziness. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to write you a prescription for Ozempic. Oh, 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 Ozempic. Was that the, was that it? Ozempic? No. Or is it, oh, 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 it's magic. I don't know. Whatever, dude. I'll write you a prescription for Ozempic. Yeah, that sounds good. Now I remember why I don't go see doctors. Because see, anytime you start that sentence like that is crazy. This is why you don't go. So you're telling me, all right, and granted, in this scenario, it might be a little bit crazy. But then again, if you go to, if you, somebody's like, chronically overweight chronically they've been obese for the majority of their life and they come in month after month and they have these issues never being alleviated and your doctor's going listen you're not losing this weight it's obvious that you can't lose this weight without help so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you on some ozempic we're gonna get you on something that's going to help you or you know at least try to push you to that goal post that uh, is going to alleviate some of these problems. That might be the best choice, honestly. I mean, I don't know in this particular scenario. Grant, it's not even a real doctor. It's just her. But the point I'm making is this actually might be the right move. I don't know personally, dude. But if you're telling me you don't like going to the doctors because the doctor is telling you things that you don't want to hear and you think that's not going to alleviate the problem, like what did you want the doctor to do? Like when, when you go into these particular types of places, and things like that, like if you go... Dude, it seems like this is the right move. But I, I could be wrong. I mean, it's not a real scenario, but. Because doctors like you just think because I'm overweight. So like if, if you're sitting there going, I'm not gonna. So like your solution is just never going to the doctor. So instead of like actually going to the doctor and then getting a no or getting a doctor just not doing anything for you, which is obviously not good. Your solution is just not going in general. And then you, and even still you get the same result. So like you go to the doctor, or at least try. 
even if this was something that's true, which I don't believe. But you go to the doctor and try to get prescribed or you try to try to alleviate some of these problems that you feel like are not deemed towards weight loss. You, instead of going to the doctor and having that even be an option at all, you're instead saying, fuck that. These dudes are fat phobic, all of them. I'm just going to not go to the doctor, and instead, I'm just going to stay home and deal with these issues perpetually forever. Are you going to be like one of those people that practice like Eastern medicine or whatever? Like you're going to rub yourself with like a, rhino a rhinoceros horn and just like see if you can get an erection that way? Are you going to like sniff like dandelions or something? Like, come on, dude. Let's be honest here for a second. That any symptom I c that I come in with is going to have to do with my weight. So why don't you be a good doctor and order me a panel of blood work? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to like that? First of all, I'm the doctor. You ain't telling me what I'm going to do. I know what the fuck I'm going to do. I went to med school for 10 years, okay? What the fuck you do, hmm? Eat that Kentucky Fried Chicken before you come here. I saw that grease on your lips. Don't act like you didn't body slam that shit. I saw you in the drive-thru. I saw you. I was behind you. I was trying to get myself a nice cup of mashed potatoes I, I could do it i'm not that big like you i saw you rolling up got that big ass bucket that's why you was late huh body slamming that grease filled chicken don't act like you didn't do that shit anyway hey wait so why don't you be a good doctor and order me a panel of blood work and we can figure out what's going on usually if you ask a doctor here in the united states go can i get these blood work done i want to do this i want to do this i want to do this doctors will just go yeah oh yeah Oh, yeah, and we'll triple the price. You know we're going to do that shit. Because, like, here in the United States, a lot of medic, a lot of health insurances just kind of pay. They don't give a fuck. Most of them just don't even look at the bill. They just pay shit. Um, sometimes they will, depending on what kind of medic, what kind of uh, health insurance you have. But most of the time, the doctors are going to, where they can give an inch, they're taking a mile, 100%. So, uh, or not the doctors. The doctors themselves are not the ones. So the people behind the scenes are the ones that are charging these absorbent amounts. That's why you look at, like, hospital bills here in America compared to like hospital bills for the same treatment in like some part of the, like in Scandinavian countries or um, European countries, the bills would be like a fraction of the price compared to the ones over here in America. What can you say, dude? America, we do it big. And that, that counts for debt too. That 100% counts for debt. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but at least here in America, you can go and you, if you want to ask and get blood work done, most of the time, they're not going to say no. Most doctors will go, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah, go downstairs right now. We'll get it done. Be a good doctor and order me a panel of blood work and we can figure out what's going on because I know it has nothing to do with my weight if you go and you get blood work right and they go Shoo, damn you cool god damn that cholesterol is through the roof damn you 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 moving bricks you moving bricks through your blood oh my god your blood was like 92 percent chocolate milk nesquik too not even a good brand you gotta lose some weight and then would you go like no no i would not i don't need to do that that's not something I need. I'm not, that's not anything to do with that. I don't know what you talk about. I don't drink grease or anything like that. What you talk about? The grease tran the grease pan underneath the, the stove? I don't drink that anymore today. I don't drink that today anymore. What are you talking about? A panel of blood work and we can figure out what's going on because I know it has nothing to do with my weight. Why do you know that? Like how could, these people are so confident, man. Like how are you going to tell a doctor? Like a doctor's going to tell you like, listen, I got these, all these years of medical schools, experiences and all this other stuff. And uh, I know what I'm talking about. And you go, you don't know what you're talking about, first of all. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. I know you're a doctor and you got expertise in this in particular. You know, you got degrees and such. You tra you treated maybe thousands of patients. But, uh, I mean, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, first of all, dude. Get the fuck out of my face. I know what I'm doing. So, get me the shit that I need and I'm out. That's all it is. Like, how are you going to say that shit so confidently? You you real deal think that? You're going to go to a mechanic and be like, the mechanic's going to be like, your tire is gone. Like, it's just busted. Like, you're riding on a rim right now. And you're going, first of all, first of all, don't fucking talk to me like that. I don't know why the fuck you're talking to me. You fucking disgusting, greased up, five o'clock shadowed looking dude. That shit, big belly, by the way. You got a big ass belly. Uh, My tire's fine. Uh, You're not charging me for that bullshit. Anyway, I'm going to need a new catalyst converter. Oh, you're telling me that that is good? My catalyst converter is good? I need another one. Double it up. Tape it right next to that second one. I don't care about the tire. That's not real. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hearing. Like you're just basically dismissing anything. The doc. I mean, Grant, it's a fucking face. It's a fake scenario. But you get what I'm saying. Like, were you just gonna go to the doctor and tell your doctor that he's lying? What are you talking about? What? How are you gonna say that? <laughs> because I'm exercising. True. I'm eating well. I'm. Yeah, you're not eating well. That's a fact. That's 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 a crazy statement that you just said right there. If you're telling me you're big and you big be you've been big bellied for your whole life and you, you you're still obese. 
Ye, ye, the, by definition, you can't be eating well. What do you mean by eating well? By what metric are you eating well? You might be eating well compared to like, I don't know, dude, from like starving people in India or something like that. Malnourished people that are like four foot two because they didn't have any food. Maybe you might be eating well in that front, but you might be eating a little bit too well. If that's the case, uh, I would never consider that to be eating well. That's a crazy ass fucking statement, dude. Stop lying to me. Because I know it has nothing to do with my weight. Because I'm exercising, yeah. I'm eating well, Period. I'm tracking everything that you've been telling me to do. You're not doing that. You're literally telling me you don't like counting calories. The past, and I still have these problems. So it doesn't have to do with my weight. True, dude. Automatically doesn't have anything to do with your weight. I mean, it's just what it is, obviously. You know, more than the fucking doctor. A dude that went to medical school for potentially the entire, like, you know, a, a, an entire section of this dude's life, but... You know more than the doctor, obviously. Why even bother go to the doctor then? I mean, this just kind of rounds up to this whole, I don't need to go to the doctor because doctors don't treat me well. Therefore, I know more than doctors. I don't need to go to the doctors, but I'm at the doctors. Like, what are you doing? What are we doing here, huh? Why are you even here? <laughs> Twitter for ED mentions and fat phobia. People saying that being fat is a choice will never not be the most stupid thing to me. I starved myself for a little over a year, and guess what? I lost all almost no weight and I was literally eating 100 calories most days and even then I threw up what I did eat and I was still fat I love when people say these things because it's like you want what you want me to do is you want me to lie to myself you want me to not believe in the rules of thermodynamics how our universe fundamentally works because you think you're a superhero is that how it works how the fuck did you eat a hundred calories in a, over a year, is that what she said, dude? And you you didn't lose any weight at all? How does that even happen? That's impossible. That doesn't even make sense, like even baseline. Can I just go halfway across the country with nothing in my tank in the car? No, you know why? Because you need energy. You can't just create energy from nothing in the sense of like, if you exist in a fat body and you eat nothing, how the fuck do you not lose weight given the fact that your body needs to have energy in order to use that, it's gonna have to use it somewhere. Are you just not, do you just exist with nothing? Are you like Clark Kent and you just go up to look at the sun and the sun like beams down on you and it creates energy from that? What the fuck are you, who are you? Are you a superhero? No, you're not a superhero. So I don't believe this shit. Uh, she may, or this person may have eaten 100 calories a day or two. I don't fucking know. It might have been that. And then maybe another day you body slam 40,000 calories. And then a lot of times I hear people saying this, like, oh, I only 100 calories. How many sodas did you drink? Because I know that you, like a lot of people don't even think sodas have calories at all. I met so many people that think that if you shake up the can, somehow the sugar goes away. What the fuck is that? I don't know. I don't, you know where does it go? What is it? Like a phantom? Does it dissipate in the, the air? How does it work? Anyway. And I was still fat. I choose to not be fat, and I was still fat. Okay, well, then you failed. I don't know what to tell you. I'm a vegetarian that eats at a healthy calorie deficit, and I'm still fat. I work out, and I'm still fat. Well, if you're in a calorie deficit, and you are still fat, you have to lower it more. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Are you losing weight while in the calorie deficit? Because if that's the case, then you should be fine, because the entire point of a calorie deficit is to, supposed to be slow and steady. But if you're not losing weight at all, you're not... There's not a steep enough calorie deficit. Would you go from a 4,000 to 4,000, like, to 3,900? If that's the case, then yeah, I can see why you're still fucking fat as shit. And you're a vegan. I don't care what anybody says, by the way. If you're a vegan, that does that's not that's not any indication for me to consider you to be healthy at all. I don't know why so many people think that because they're vegan, therefore they're default healthy. They're not. I met plenty of vegans that are, like, super malnourished. Half of them don't even know what multivitamins are. These people are literally sitting there body slamming tofu, bananas, and orange peels thinking that they're good. You're not good. And don't think you're better than me because I eat meat too. You know, like, I, I, whatever you want to say, dude. I, I, I would suck a cow off to get the steak. Whatever. People carry weight differently according to the genetics. Sure, people carry people do carry weight differently according to the genetics. Some some people are just naturally gifted in the realm of muscle bellies, right? If you looked at, for instance, Ronnie Coleman before he was Mr. Olympia, before he started really lifting weights, that man was gifted. He had massive muscle bellies, and you can tell that if he did start putting on muscle, it would be crazy. It would be insane that the amount of weight that he would be able to put on in terms of muscle. And wouldn't you know, when he did start lifting weights and took a little bit of drugs, he looked crazy like an alien on stage right i don't care what anybody says 2003 ronnie coleman was the apex of what a human being could possibly accomplish i don't even know how that was possible looking at that man on stage was like looking at a transformer transforming in front of me like my, my mind was blown i couldn't believe it but 
Just not a case to say like, oh, my genetics are different from yours. Therefore, I can be 250 pounds, 350 pounds, and that's just how I am. That's not how that works. You still need to eat in order to maintain those kinds of weights. <sighs> okay, and genetics. And a lot of people don't get to choose just not to be fat. And people should have starved themselves to be just pick better parents. That's what it comes down to. Like when you're when you're creating your class up in the sky. Just pick the better parents, right? Two parents, maybe you want a good hairline. Your father should have been Ronald Reagan and your, 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 his wife should be like Cher. I don't fucking know, dude, whatever. The point I'm making is obviously you're not gonna be able to choose, but I would never recommend anybody to starve themselves. Um, if you're going to go on a fasting spree, make sure you do it in a responsible way. Fasting could be super amazing as long as you're doing it correctly. I had a friend that used to fast for like days at a time. He loved it, but he was also like burning the candle on both ends. He was fasting. He was working out for nine hours a day, not even joking with you. He would literally go to class. And then as soon as he got out of class, he was in the Planet Fitness on the elliptical for four or five hours a day. And then he would still work out after that. Craziness. I don't know how the fuck this guy lived for as long as he was. And his calorie deficit was steep. He was eating like a thousand calories calories a day this is a six foot two big man big man now granted he was fat i think his max weight was almost 300 pounds so that's not good but he did lose a lot of it which is good for him um but it's not healthy you should not be trying to burn the candle at both ends it should be sustainable it should be well within your boundaries of things like don't force yourself to like really go to the gym you're really seeing diminishing returns if you're staying in the gym past like an hour an hour and a half depending on what you're doing some people are in there for hours in a day i have no fucking idea what they're doing what are you hitting chest 18 times why what are you doing dude how much more growth do you think you're gonna get out of that shit once once you've hit it correctly once you feel that like mm, you know that, that girthiness on your chest or whatever muscle you're feeling you're good you're good dude i'm only in the gym like i don't know 30 40 minutes depending on the cardio session you don't need to be in the gym for hours on end to really feel that kind of uh oh yeah tomorrow i'm gonna be i'm gonna be good i really worked out hard you worked out hard regardless you were just in there for an extra four hours because you wanted to worry about your own health i promise fat people don't want to hear that they should go on diets for the third time today sure dude um you know you don't you don't have to do anything it's totally fine now let's do the hashtags i always love the hashtags hashtag fat person things hashtag fat phobia hashtag twitter fat phobia it's fine if you don't want to lose weight it's completely fine I don't, but the thing is like if you're gonna sit there and say don't don't talk to fat people or like mind your own business how the fuck you gonna say that while making a public post do you just expect people to not like reply to this isn't the entire point of making a public post is that other people see it and like can respond to it no is that not what you wanted why the fuck is this here then what are you doing then why how can you like what you're basically doing is like you're shooting somebody and going like, don't judge me. Don't judge me. What are you fucking talking about? Don't do that. Don't like, what did I do? I didn't do anything wrong. Fuck you. Don't talk to me, bitch. That's what I'm getting from that. No one is forcing you to be attracted to fat people. That's a fucking lie, dude. I've literally seen the, the amount of dating videos I have. It, it's, it's insane. The amount of times I've heard these fat incel women, fat incel dudes claiming that they're beautiful regardless. And that if you don't find fat people attractive, there's something wrong with you and that you're negating an entire bracket of people because of some kind of stereotypes that you've heard or been through, which is bullshit, by the way, dude. I'm sorry that I don't want to date somebody with high blood pressure and they're literally moving bricks through their fucking veins. Anyway. Nobody's forcing you to be attracted to fat people. All of you, all you have to do is be normal, polite, and not like cruel and mean. You'd think this wasn't a big ask, but guess what? So the cruel and mean, I can definitely agree with, dude. People shouldn't be cruel and mean. If somebody asks you out, you should probably be nice about it. But I've been in situations where I've asked a woman out and they looked at me and they were like, you, you're like the definition of musty. Like if I looked in the definition right now and I looked under your name, which would be David, I would see a picture of a humpback seagull and it would have like tomato sauce dripping from his chin because you're thirsty as fuck. Obviously, you've never even seen a vagina before. You're probably gay. Let's be honest here. You're probably asking me out because it was a dare and you're just doing that. But I would never even entertain the thought of ever being with you. The fact that my eyes... The light from my eyes, hitting my eyes right now and seeing your face is disrespectful in and of itself. Get the fuck out of my sight, you musty watermelon looking bitch. I've had that happen to me. I've had people tell me disrespectful stuff like that. I don't even think I'm that ugly. Sometimes it's like you match with somebody on a dating app, right? And the thing is, if you match with somebody, that means they have to like your profile too. And I'll message those, those girls like, obviously there's some kind of mutual interest here. She liked me and I liked her. So therefore I should initiate this conversation. Hey, what's going on? Ew. Ew, you are ugly. What the fuck, dude? What the hell are you doing? Why the fuck are you liking my shit? And then like smacking me in the mouth. 
with your with your nonsensical BBC of just terribleness. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, people are just fucking terrible sometimes, man. Whatever, dude. Um, when we say respect fat people, what we what people hear is worship fat people. Build cults around the concept of fatness. That's a fact. You guys most definitely have cults, man. That's a factual statement, dude. You guys sucking it down the Kool-Aid. Oh, so so much Kool-Aid too. It's like sugary Kool-Aid too. You know that video of the girl, that black girl that was pouring uh, the sugar mix in the Kool-Aid and then like the entire brick of sugar came out and then she was like, oh my God, right? I promise that's not a racist joke. That actually happened. I think maybe you'll see it on your screen right now. Anyway, let's keep going. You better pack on at least 20, 200 pounds in the next month. You may you marry you marry a fat person right now or else you're an awful person. That's not what we're asking for. Just don't be rude to fat people. That's it. That's all we're saying. Okay, if that's all you're saying, that's that's fine. I mean, that's that's reasonable. That's completely reasonable. I have no I have no issue with any of that stuff. Next, for the people who say it's okay to not date fat people since it's their preference. I agree with you, which is why you immediately throwing all fat people under out of your dating pool, swiping left purely because someone is fat without even so much as reading the bio. For example, if your preference is actually caused by the influence of fat phobia in society and not considering fat people as a possibility to date makes no sense. Preferences does not mean does not mean requirement and never has. So how the fuck are you going to be upset? So you just told me that it's perfectly fine to, for me to not like fat people for the variety of reasons that I have chosen, all of them contributing to unhealthiness, right? For that. And then also I don't find fat people very attractive at all regardless of the gender or whoever the fuck they were. And I think in general it's probably not a good idea. Like I saw I would really like to these people to answer this question. When you see like an overweight or obese cat or like an overweight and obese dog and they can't do shit, like cats like jumping, right? Cats, I had a cat for a long time, jumping on my bed, jumping on the couch, jumping on things, whatever the fuck, running around the house, tossing balls and playing with your cat. That's a beautiful thing that you can do with your cat. And guess what? It requires your cat to be, have a level of athleticness that you would expect from a cat to have. But if your cat is physically being prohibited by the weight that you, because cat, most cats, like depending on what cat you have, my cat, your cat, whatever, sometimes cats will just eat whatever the fuck they see and they won't stop. And it's really important in those particular scenarios to adjust diets depending on that particular animal. I know a lot of dogs don't give a fuck. They'll just eat anything, right? And you have to contour your pet's diets to better suit their lifestyles because guess what? If your pet is fucking double or triple the way that it should be and it can't walk anymore that's a low quality of life for that animal you're abusing that shit that's not a good thing to like i know a lot of people think it's cute to have a cat that's like waddling around or whatever and it's living a good life no it's fucking not that thing is hyperventilating because it had to wake up and walk to the food bowl and walk back to go back to sleep that's just not good okay so like i always ask this right why the fuck do you have a problem with animals being overweight and obese, but you don't have a problem with human beings, your common man, your comrade next to you, hyper fucking ventilating because he couldn't get up out of his office chair in time because he was going to run to the fucking break room to get that new donut that he got from like Megan got there from Dunkin' Donuts, dude. It's not cool. It's not cool. I don't know why these people have these like these weird ideas of how this shit fucking works. And again, how are you going to tell me it's not a good idea? Oh yeah, you can totally not like fat people. But by the way, if you don't like fat people, you're a fucking asshole. I'm, person, I'm personally not romantically or physically attracted to fat guys, even though I'm a little chubby myself. Yeah, I hear this quite a bit, dude. If you're a, if you're a lady um, and you like men, which is fine. I think that's probably normal. If you don't want a guy, because like, let's be honest here. Depending on how fat this dude is, it's going to be very difficult for sexual activity to even commence. Um, what is he going to do? He's going to drop his gut on your back. You're going to have scoliosis because this dude, like, he's going to use your, your back, your butt cheeks as a shelf for his you know, his, uh, whatever you want to call this thing, the, the girth, the protrusion, the belly, the bigness. So, it, and let's be honest, like, what else is he going to do? You can't do shit. You think he's getting on top? <laughs> Psych, that ain't fucking happening. You think you're going to get on top? Probably. You could probably do that depending on how girthy the man is. But, if realistically, it's all about you. If you're a woman in this scenario, you're doing all the fucking work. I hate to tell you that, but it is what it is. Um, if you're also, if you're on your hands and knees, which is an ideal position for a lot of people, which is fine. It's a, you know, it's great. Whatever. I like seeing buttholes sometimes, not all the time. And, um, but he ain't seeing butthole. That's a matter of fact. He's probably not even seeing very much at all because most of these dudes 
as girthy as they get probably don't even see their penises after a long time and their penises are being condensed by the sheer magnitude of the the weight that's pushing down on their manhood on a daily basis some women also have this issue but i've seen like really big vaginas like naturally and sometimes you don't even know if it's a vagina you know what i'm talking about you usually see like an indentation but when they take off their pants you're like what the fuck is that is that just like a part of your leg nope it's just a big vagina which is fine i mean like big in sense of like the outside vagina, the lip area, the air, the lip area, whatever you want to call that, dude. The uh, the lips are a little bit big, and you don't know what the fuck is going on there. It's okay, but then you're like, when you move it apart, you're like, oh, okay, I see it now. But anyway, um, yeah, he's gonna have to just drop his gut on your back. That's just what it comes down to. He's gonna have to sit. He's gonna be behind you. He's gonna be hyperventilating because the thought of having sex with a woman is probably far fetched for him. And then he's probably already pre ejaculated four times by the time he even takes off his pants. Right? That's gonna be a whole thing. That's gonna take a while too. By the way, taking off the pants that's gonna take a long time. You're like a girl with skinny jeans. Go. You know how long it takes him to take off their pants? Whew. Long time. It's gonna be like that. What even? For, it's gonna be even worse with this guy because he's gonna be sweating. It's gonna be like beads of sweat sliding down off his legs and like i said hyperventilating <gasps> and then when he's on top of you uh sorry when he's behind you he's all you're gonna feel is like you're thinking it's about to go in but then you feel that like right because that gut's gonna be slimy and he's gonna drop that shit on your back he's got bigger boobs than you obviously and that's just gonna be crumbling your whole spine dude like as he drops it on your back your spine's gonna be like you know what i'm talking about it's gonna like go like that it's gonna snake the pain's gonna snake all the way fucking up so is it advantageous to have sex with a fat man i don't know i mean it depends on how much of a masochist you are how much of a, a brutal person you are how much you feel like you want to inject yourself with the trauma of having early scoliosis or back problems it just depends on you personally uh is there a penis involved sometimes you don't even know sometimes he might not even whip it out sometimes he doesn't even know if he has it anymore this might be a woman the whole time this guy Probably thought he was a man his whole life because he never saw his penis. And then he finally, he just made it to that point. He was like, oh yeah, I forgot. I'm not, psh, I'm a woman. I forgot, you know, or you, you self-induce the womanhood where your penis like sucks inside of yourself because it's just not, never being used. I don't fucking know. Anyway, dude, I'm personally not romantically or physically attracted to fat guys, even though I'm a little bit chubby myself. Uh, but I am, I am not into the male celebrity type guys you see on screen or buff guys. I just like thin guys, muscle or no muscle, but uh, I don't think I don't look down on fat guys. In fact, I am pro body body. I am pro body positivity for males just because I'm not attracted to fat guys. Doesn't mean I don't see them as friends. It's a good, it's a good one. It's pretty good. I'll give you that one. This is the worst and absolutely most pointless, <laughs> pointless addition that I could have ever possibly made to this post. God bless. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Don't, you know what? If you wanted to date a man and he's fat, dude, you feel bad and you don't want to date him. Fuck you. You're a bad person. Why the fuck are you not dating fat guys? Why are you not dating fat women? Fat women are beautiful too. Okay. So what? They got lumps and it looks like, un like you know when you have dough and you're making like pizza and it kind of, it's a little bit lumpy because you put a little bit too much water in there, or a little bit too much grease or whatever you do. I've never made pizza before, homemade. You know how it comes out lumpy? Butt cheeks, butt cheeks. I know some guys that actually prefer women with butt cheeks like that and that's okay. You know, they say they love it and it's more lumpy and they love that shit or whatever the fuck. I don't know. They're all black guys. I don't know if that's like an indication of anything, but I've heard that black guys like really, really obese women. I don't know if that's true, uh, but I have met a lot of bl uh, black guys that do like obese women, and they also like toes, which I don't know if that's also a thing. Like, do black guys like toes? What's up? What's up with it? There's too many black guys I know that have condiments in the bedroom for that particular moment when the woman whips out her toes, and he's like, oh, man, those just look good. And they're, they're always subtle about it, you know, because they don't want to let you know that they're into toes, but they're going to do it inadvertently, like, oh, damn, you you know, you real you real deal, you real deal, take care of yourself and shit. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like the way you take care of yourself and shit. Damn, let, let me see what you got working with. Yeah, yeah, turn around, turn around. Yeah, I, oh, let me see those feet. Damn, girl, you look, your feet looking real good. Let me see your feet, actually, real quick. I'm not really into it, but, you know, your feet looking real good. Oh, damn, your feet looking good. Okay, okay. Prop him up here for a second. Prop him up here for a second. And he going into the cabinet. Well, you know what I'm talking about? He's going to reach in over a little bit. And you're like, yeah, 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 that's real good. That's real good. And then he whip out, he whip out the spaghetti sauce. You know what I'm talking about? You just start, like, you know, doing one of those. And getting like, oh, yeah, 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 you're totally... That's what that's how it happens. That's how it happens, dude. And you don't even know what's happening sometimes. It can all be in one motion. First, you're thinking that you're stripping for your man. Next thing you know, your feet are in his mouth. And he's just 
swallow him and down. They're halfway down his throat at that point, dude. I don't know why so many black guys enjoy it, but fuck that for me. I'm not sucking fucking toes. So I don't care if you're a well-groomed woman. I've met some women with athlete's foot, okay? And I'm not going down there and sucking on the fungus. Like, what are you... I'm not doing that, okay? Uh, it's just not personally for me. I'm not trying to get athlete's foot on my mouth. I don't want to wake up one day and have... I don't know, Michael Jordan disease and shit on my fucking throat. I don't want to have that shit. Okay, whatever. Anyway, next post. I really like to go to the gym this year, do exercises and stuff. But of uh, the reasons I don't go, part is getting there is fucking impossible if you don't drive. This is a fact, dude. Here in America, our fucking streets are not made for human beings. They're made for cars, which is really sad. So if you don't drive for any reason, whatever that may be, you're just almost fucked. And if you think you're going to get on a bicycle and you're going to drive there on that bicycle, you're most likely going to die on the way there. I don't care. Look, I used to ride bicycles a lot when I was a teenager and I loved it, dude. It was so great, but I've had probably in my four or five years of riding bicycles recreationally, I probably almost died five times probably. And you might be thinking, David, that's not that bad. Five times a year easily. And it would be like, you're just riding down the street and a dude, he don't give a fuck about you. Or maybe he just kind of makes the assumption of like, oh, he was in my blind spot. What do you mean I was in, you was in my blind spot, dude? I was like right next to you for 10 minutes. I, you waved at me. And then you were like, you know, like one of those. And people are just here in Boston, especially dude, they're fucking crazy. And you know what? They'll real deal try to make it seem like you're the issue, you know? They'll always go like, these fucking cyclists are the fucking worst. I can't fucking believe these dudes. They think they own the fucking road. And meanwhile, they're driving in the bike lane, you know? Like, these guys are fucking full force driving in the bike lane. And, you know, where do you get off, you know, man? It's, it's risky. It's real risky to be a person that wants to recreationally ride bicycles. I don't know what, like, here in Boston or in Massachusetts or even general, like, what they could do since all the roads are pretty much already made. It's not like you're going to have to go to, like, city ordinance and be like, we need a separate bike lane specifically designed for bikes and, like, separate from the road. I don't think that's ever going to fucking happen. That can't happen. What are you going to do, like, bore holes, holes through the fucking floor or the ground and just make bike lanes for that shit's never gonna fucking happen dude suck my dick it is what it is you like they, they 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 you literally walk down the street and there's like uh potholes in the fucking floor that have been there for like five plus years they paint the same school five times a year with all these taxpayers i just always sometimes want to know like where's my taxpayers dollars go like i remember one time there's literally paint in the fucking outside of the school different colors every four months every time i walked by it it was red and the next like four months later it turned blue i was like oh wow why? Why the fuck? I just saw those dudes painting it like three months ago. Six months later, guess what? Green. What the fuck? What are you doing? What is that? How many? There's like 40 dudes outside painting that shit. Slow as fuck too. Can you give me the money? You know, I don't know. It's like, why are you painting that shit so often? What are you doing? You know, why? Why do you need to paint it so often? Anyway. And parking is impossible if you do drive, but mostly I'm fat. Gyms are very much for people who are skinny who go, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm so fat. Ha 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 Because they're a size 10 inside of a, instead of a size 8. And that's the experience. It's itself. That's the experience itself. What to wear to the gym. You know, first of all, if I'm going to keep it a buck. If you're going to the gym and you're worried about what you're going to wear to the gym, just wear bullshit. You, you know, like, I don't know why so many people prioritize so much. I know some girls, you don't see this on guys' sides. I mean, if you do meet a guy and he's like, oh, I got to have a gym fit, that guy's probably gay. Because most dudes don't give a fuck, right? Because, like, I see dudes walk in with, like, sweatpants, terrible undersized shirts or big-ass shirts, whatever. Women, though, they really emphasize this shit. Leggings, sports bras, big, full fits. Like, dudes, like, you know, the fit itself is more expensive than my entire life. And I don't know why. Full face of makeup, all this shit. I know girls personally that do that shit. And I'm always thinking, like, you know, what, what should I wear to the gym? What the fuck are you talking about? Just bullshit. Like, what did you wear when you woke up? Yeah, just wear that shit. What do you, like, you're going to ruin it, right? When you go to the gym, the entire point is to catch a sweat and do something, do work. And then, obviously, that's just going to be sweating. Yeah? So, obviously, just wear something bullshit. I don't, whatever. Dude. Anyway, it's probably a girl. What to wear at the gym first place. You ever get tired you ever get tired to find plus size gym clothing? <laughs> Again, just wear some oversized shit. It doesn't fucking matter. Why do you care so much? The entire point of the gym, it what do, why are you trying to look good in the gym? Nobody gives a fuck about you. How much money are you willing to spend on a crap pair of shorts that will roll up your thighs and down your tummy till you're wearing improvised thongs? Eh, okay, okay, she got a point there. Cause if you don't have 30 that don't bother 
they won't last long for either. So just this is what you do. Okay. Go to the, go to like, I don't know what you have next to you, but go to Walmart and go ahead and just buy, I would probably get a size, just get your size in sweatpants, your size in a t-shirt or a hoodie and just wear that. Just get like four or five of those. How much are sweatpants? Five, 10, 20 bucks, whatever. Ten, probably 10 bucks. 10 bucks. You get three of those, three of those, 60 bucks. You're good. You can get that shit. Wash them. Obviously wash them, wash them, wash them. Obviously don't fucking wear the same shit every single fucking day. I have done that. Not good. Um, and then go to the gym wearing bullshit, whatever you're, you're, you're you, the entire purpose of going to the gym is to destroy yourself. You think you're gonna look good at the end of that session. If you do, you did something wrong. PE made it perfectly clear that exercise is supposed to be a humiliating and painful experience. I don't know about a humiliating. Why, what is it? Why is it humiliating? In what, in what sense is it humiliating? And society has only ever backed that up. Like eating vegetables. You are not supposed to do this because you enjoy it. You're supposed to do it because it's good for you. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I love vegetables. Broccoli. I like corn. I like carrots. I like a whole bunch of broccolis, dude. Um, that's fucking bullshit. Also, can you touch on the humiliating part? What about it is humiliating? Going to the gym? Really? I don't think so. Nobody cares. I know like there's a lot of people out there that think like, when you go to the gym, there's people judging you or like maybe they're laughing about you. You're going to get that anywhere. I mean, it's just what it is. People are going to, if, if somebody's going to make fun of you, it, uh, the gym isn't going to stop them. So if they're an asshole, they're an asshole, but that shouldn't repel you from going to the gym because you think at some point that person's going to humiliate you or say something that you don't like. That's a bullshit reason. First of all, most people that are in the gym um, are going there for one reason, which is to get a workout in. If they're going to the gym for social inquiries, then they're doing it wrong. That's fucking crazy. Okay. Don't worry about those people. Worry about yourself. It's not supposed to be that big of a deal. So if you are going to the gym, somebody's making fun of you, that's an anomaly. And then also report it to gym staff. That's fucking crazy. It, even though it's a gym, it's a private establishment. You can kick those dudes out. You ever see people like recording people other in gyms report that shit. That's not supposed to happen. Even though it's a gym and I feel like people should be able to like record their shit. If it's against the rules, it's against the rules. And frankly, I think more gyms should not allow people to record shit. And don't get me wrong. America, obviously hawk, hawk, whatever, you know, birds that make that noise, whatever. But it's a private establishment though. You're not, if you go ahead and record outside, if you want to, but don't record on the inside. I'm sick of people, um, like recording themselves and recording other people. Why, why are you doing that? First of all, why are you doing that? Um, but yeah, go to the gym for yourself. It shouldn't be like humiliating. Um, maybe at first because you don't know what the fuck you're doing, but don't look at it like that. Everybody starts at a baseline of nothing. And as you go and gradually you become more and more experienced as things happen, it's better to go and then be shit than never to go at all. Because guess what? You're shit at first, but then after about three, four months of going, you're a fucking pro. You know exactly what you're doing, how to do it. You know, basic exercises for the most part. You're probably experimenting with other shit. That's just crazy already. So don't worry about it. You're coming stronger. You're becoming more lubricated. Your body's looking better you are probably feeling better because your hormones are getting in about getting properly balanced you're drinking more water because that's like and totally incentivized going to the gym people are probably coming up to you and going why are you wearing crocs at the gym you can't wear that here why is that bottle so big you can't bring that here fuck you planet fitness by the way don't tell me what kind of size bottle i can bring to the fucking gym you're serving people pizza for god's sakes the fuck is wrong with you same thing with crocs but then again i don't think crocs are appropriate in any situations but anyway I don't know what PE, by the way, you went to that said this. That's crazy. Like eating vegetables. You're not supposed to do it unless you feel enjoy it. You're supposed to do it because it's good for you. The fact that you should hate the entire process because it's punishment for not being the right in, in the first place. And I don't want to live like that. But that's the world we live in. Sure. I mean, if you think that the entire process of going to the gym and working out and eating right is not good for you and you don't like it. I don't know. I don't know why you would call it a punishment. Uh, it's just a really pessimistic way of looking at anything in life. That's a terrible way of looking at it, matter of fact. It's not supposed to be a punishment. I mean, it may feel bad at first, like in the sense of like you're doing something necessarily that you don't want to do. But the end result, the the result of it in, in a month, two months, because you're not seeing results in the first week. You're not seeing results in the second week. You might see some results in the first month, two months, right? Three months though, four months, you're seeing things. You're seeing your muscles get a little bit juiced up. You're feeling better. You could do, you could run longer. These things are, um, you know, you're going to gradually see these things. So sure, it's not like, it's not instant satisfaction, but it's prolonged satisfaction. You're not getting the result right away. And I know a lot of people nowadays have a hard time with that understanding that like you're not going to get everything right away 
But that's okay because in a few months, you're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You're going to have more confidence. It's going to be great. So I don't know why you would look at it in such a pessimistic way in the sense of like, why would you ever consider this to be a punishment? That just kind of screams that you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Anyway, I hope you're going to the gym. I hope you're working out. I hope you are eating right. If you're doing any of those things, let me know down below. If you watch the video in its entirety because we're ending the video here. Let me know down below. Sorry. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things help me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I'd appreciate it tremendously. Um, I want to thank everybody that's a member of the channel. Thank you so much. You guys are all super amazing. And I want to thank anybody that is subscribed. Also, if you want to become a member, you can hit that join button. If you don't want to, that's fine too. You're beautiful either way. If you watch the video in its entirety, Leave it down below by typing in punishment because apparently life is punishing because I mean, it is technically do, but it's a very, I hate being around people that look at the worst things. People that just constantly complain about fucking everything. These people are cancerous to my soul. It makes me feel terrible to be around these people because they're constantly complaining because if you were ever around me, I'm joyful. I'm always joyful. I'll complain when it's necessary, but I'm not complaining ordinarily. I'm a pretty happy guy. I don't know, man. I'm really good. That's one thing I really love about myself is like I have an ability because I see it in other people and I can recognize that some people are just, I don't know, naturally pessimistic people and they have a poor outlook on life or it's just very difficult for them to resonate with the positiveness of things. And that sucks because I know a lot of times it's not even their fault. But for me, I'm always happy. I'm always having a good time. Even when I'm not having a good time, I, I, I can always look at the glass half full type shit and see that there's a better outcome and I'm going to be okay and things are all right and I can always do this and this and that, whatever the fuck. So if you have that same type of uh, outlook on life or you're trying to be better and maybe get away from people that have a bad outlook and if you're one of those people that are pessimistic, that's okay. I'm not like shitting on you. I just hope that you're working on trying to be more happy. That's what it's all about, right? It'd be more happy in an organic way. You shouldn't just feel more happy because it's like taking drugs or whatever the fuck, but you should feel happy organically. Like find joy in your life. Find something that you love to do and do it. You know, obviously don't do drugs, but I'm not saying that. But like, you know what I'm talking about. You like playing basketball. You like playing video games. I know a lot of people like to shit on video games because they're a waste of time. They are. But then again, most things are wastes of time depending on what you're doing. If you're not like, I know some people that go, if you're not making, fr if you're not making money from it, then it's a waste of fucking time. Suck me off. That's not how that works. Do you not have sex? Huh? You don't eat? You don't do any of that? No, you don't, obviously. So you're not making money from it. So shut the fuck up. If I want to play video games, I'm going to play video games. And in the same way that if you want to beat your meat for 45 minutes a day, go ahead, beat your meat. <laughs> go ahead. As long as you're not over abusing it. That shit will desensitize and you will no longer feel your hand anymore. And that's not good because if you ever do eventually find a woman that wants to indulge in the male anatomy of your body and then she touches your penis and you go... I don't feel that. What is, it's like my dick is a ghost. It's it's like almost kind of like I, there's nothing going on, right? You feel like you're Stephen Hawkins from the neck down. That's not good. That's not good, dude. You should probably have some sensation in your penis. So don't beat off as much. And if you are beating off as much, stop stop focusing on the tip. Stop. This is like a, that's a helpful tip, helpful tidbit for a lot of guys. If you're beating your shit, stop, st stop strangling that shit at the top, dude. It don't need to be like that. If you're beating that, you know, just uh, focus on the shaft a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit, not that much. And the same thing could be for girls, right? Um, I know that most satisfaction doesn't come from internally. I understand that. But some of these girls um, will just be sitting there beating that shit, beating their meats for, I knew a girl that used to beat their meat for four hours, four hours. I don't even know what she was doing. I think she was just watching like Fantasia or uh, fucking uh, what, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody while she was beaten off. I don't know what the fuck she was doing for 45 to four hours. Like, what are you doing, man? I uh, can't do it. Can't do that shit, dude. I'm not even, I'm, if you thought that we were going to do something, dude, I don't have the facilities for that. What am I going to do? My penis doesn't vibrate. It doesn't have the extension function. I'm not strapping on a fake dick. That's crazy. I knew a girl that tried to tell me that shit. She was like, oh, you ever think about, you know what Bad Dragon was? And I was like, nah, what is that? And then she had sent me a link to some fucking, I don't know. It was like a crazy dildo site. And it was a whole bunch of strap-ons that you could put on yourself. And she was like, I want this one. It was the shape of a corn or something like that. And I was like, I'm not fucking, what the fuck are you talking about? No. My shit is big and juiced up already. I don't need that shit. Oh, I know, but it's not like, you know, it's, it's shaped like regular. I'm sorry that I have regular. Like, I can't help that. It's not like I can go to God and be like, yo, why didn't you shape my ship like a, 
a sunflower, right? I'm sorry that my penis is not a sunflower penis. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You're a beautiful specimen of humanity, by the way. I feel like when you were first birthed, you had like a halo above your head of beauty. It was just like emanating above you, like an angelic being, you know? And I know your favorite candy is love is love and friendship and awesomeness and having good life. That's awesome. I care for you deeply. I love you. I do love you. I love everyone here. Thank you for sharing some time with me today. You're a beautiful specimen of humanity. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord and my second channel. And if you want to go on any of those things and follow any of that stuff, you can totally do that. I love every single one of you, especially if you're here right now, because I know that this video is a little bit long. So I'm glad that you're here right now. Thank you for spending some time with me, you beautiful specimens. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.